everybody, thanks for watching. I am headed to Trump National Golf Course in Palos Verdes, California. So I'm going through San Pedro right now and I'm headed there to practice. They have like an amazing range and there's some things that I wanted, some drills that I wanted to shoot and also some other stuff that I wanted to shoot. There's not that many nice grass ranges in the area and this one's really nice. If you guys have been watching the channel for a really long time, um, I used to sometimes like film really, really long videos of my practice that I was sure nobody would watch, but they got watched a little bit. And uh, I kind of felt like doing that kind of thing today. And also there's some drills that I wanted to do, so stay tuned. All right, I got my balls, cool water fountain, awesome clubhouse. Uh, it's cool because it used to be here, it used to be $40 all you can hit. And now it's $25 just for this large bag of balls. I know you're about to do some serious range work. All that stuff is in there. And I have an idea for something I'm gonna do with everything in here, including this. If you see my bag over there in the distance, I've got a lot of noodles and other things like that. So I wanted to go through some of the drills that I've been using and just uh, let you guys see what I'm working on. Cause I think, uh, I think it's, when I used to do it, people used to like it. So we're gonna get into that right now. The first thing I'm gonna do is warm up and I have the microphone on so it'll be easy. I won't have to yell. All right, so let's go through first the equipment of what I have that I'm gonna be working with today. First thing I'm gonna be using, this is Swing Profile, so this, that's my cell phone. So on a selfie golf thing, selfie golf holder, that's my cell phone with Swing Profile there. And here in Swing Profile, you can't really see, but they have this thing called replay mode. So it will, as soon as you hit a shot, it has an algorithm that can tell that you've hit a shot and it will auto replay your shot. So that really makes learning get really fast. My uh, Rock and LM head covers. Got some pool noodles and other stuff. The uh, Golf Stick Pro. This I was really excited about though. This is a pool noodle, but look what it does. It has a gooseneck inside of it. It kind of articulates. So I'm gonna be using that later. That's really cool. I'll just put that down there. And then the last piece of equipment I have here is this is the Swing Caddy 2, which I like because it gives you some ball data about what you're doing, I don't want to mess up. That works a little bit better off the mats because you can keep using the same spot again and again. So, all right, so the first thing before I start practicing, I want to like set the goals for um, what I want to get accomplished today. And really what I want to get accomplished is I want a really good position at the top. I don't want to get across very much. So I want a good takeaway that's not snatchy, but together. And then I want to be right down the line at the top. Not like that, but right like that. And then transition, I want to get to this position where Mike Bender talks about, so when you make your backswing, see how the knees aren't parallel to the target line here? And then by the time the knees get parallel again, I want my hands to be about belt high. About like that. Most people watch the knees. When it gets parallel again, the hands are still super high and it's behind you, so you have to stall everything. You have to stop moving your body so that you can get down to the ball and then you have this fake finish. So the drill for that, which I'll get into after I warm up, is this toe up drill. So first I'm just gonna hit some shots and try to warm up. The main thing though, the first thing I'm going to set up though, even before, and this is why I love swing profile. So, so you can see it's replaying that swing so I can start, you know, analyzing what I did right and what I did wrong. Now that one was dead solid. It was pulled just a little bit. See, it keeps replaying. So the first thing that that shows me that is, and that's the sound of the swing profile. It captured something. The first thing that that shows me is a lot of your swing problems that you might think is a, an actual swing fault or, or a problem that you have. It might not be a swing problem, a fault or problem at all. It might just be your alignment is messed up. So I'm gonna put that there to aim at. 
so many golfers, Jack Nichols and everybody, talk about having an intermediate target, like one foot out. But then I really like to have something pretty far out there. I'm going to start teeing up shots. I'm pretty far out there so that I know when I look up, it really helps me align myself. What would be perfect would actually be something that's going up like 50 feet. Well, not 50 feet, like 12 feet. That's like pretty far out there, which is what they have over in, in, uh, in like Bender Golf Academy place. All right, so here, and now I'm going to start this over that, just to the right of that noodle. It's better. Still not as far right as I wanted, though. So every time I hit a shot, I can go back here and reinforce what I'm working on. And right now, I'm not really working on anything yet. I'm just kind of getting the feel and getting warmed up. But I go here. I'm going to really start it right at that noodle. straight up it. That was very good. But I just want to start it just to the right of that. All right, let's see if my swing caddy can pick up this ball. I gotta wake it up. So this thing comes with a remote. My dream in the future is I'd like to do one of these shows. Wake up. There you go. Practice mode seven. I'd like to do one of these shows where I'm doing this long form discussion at you know, and uh, practice session. Only, like they do at Masters on the Range, I have actual real-time plate scope where, where it's, you know, Pro Tracer, where it's tracking the ball and showing the data right away to me and to you guys. I think that would be a really entertaining show. I don't know what I would need to, um, equipment-wise, to get that together. Let's see if our launch monitor here is working. Yeah, that was good. 163 carry. And kind of a smooth swing. So that's a good spot for it. So we're going to put a tee down to know where the good spot is. All right, so I'll hit one more, and then we'll actually get into the legitimate swing work and practice. That one actually started right online that time. Here we go. That was nice. That didn't catch it that time, though. That's like, like I said, this thing works a lot better on the mats, where you can have a real consistent uh, area that you're hitting it from. And sometimes, if you bring up a big divot, it'll mess this thing up. It won't catch it. I don't know if I was far enough back that time. All right, so let's get into what I'm working on. We'll start simple, and then we'll go more complicated. So the first thing I want to do And this is probably the wackiest looking of, of the things that I'm going to have, but whatever. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, this is a, a collapsible uh, road cone I got on Amazon for a whopping $10. Because in my transition, like a lot of people, I can definitely... get like this a little bit, kind of transition with my body. And so if I stand to this cone and go above it and then try to go in front of it this way, so not like this, but in front of it this way, the only way I can do that, there's two ways I can do it. One, I can go here and I can tip my body this way and then kind of, that's kind of cheating it. But if you keep your head steady, the only way you can do it is you have to let your arms out a little bit to really get under that thing. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work on not because I want it. I do agree that you really got to exaggerate things to get them to show, show up in your regular swing. So all I want to do is I want to have this thing really exaggerated. And all I want to do is try to hit that T. So the swing, uh, swing profile is showing me. As crazy and as exaggerated as that felt, 
it didn't look very weird or different at all. So where'd he go? Let's look at that one. Second cone. Yeah, that's very good. Okay. I was trying to feel where my, my arms are start, were starting down more, but the balls were still going to the straight or to the left. So that told me that for sure I wasn't doing what I was feeling, even though I was feeling it really hard. When I put this barrier in, then, and I, it feels insanely exaggerated, but in the swing, it's just pretty well synced up. You can see the hips are still going first, even though I'm feeling like I have to get my arms going first to get it under that. And that starts to the right and drew back. So that's why I'm really a big proponent of using noodles and other things, because your feel alone is not going to get you, get you very far. So what I could see with that, when I watched it in the replay mode, is my transition was very good, but once I got to the ball, I kind of short-armed it like this, and then uh, still swung this way. It wasn't as driving and forward as I want. So we're gonna bring out another noodle. A lot of your drills are gonna have to come in combos. So this one is very extreme. So we're gonna put this here about where my leg would be, right up my heel, and it's just gonna be have a slight angle. This is not the sharpest. There we go. All right, cool. So it's just gonna have a slight angle to it. Now you can see if I get under this, but then round it this way, I'm gonna take this thing out. Or if I chicken wing, I'm gonna take this thing out. But if I get here and swing that way, it's gonna be pretty good. So. What you want to do is, because it feels like I could not hit this ball, and the ball's kind of stopping me from being able to do it correctly. So we, what I like to do is, I'm going to put a T down, and I'm just going to try to hit the T out. And then when I'm comfortable hitting the T out, then I'm going to put a ball there. It's pretty good. And you can tell your divot will get a little sh more, sh if you're steep and kind of chicken winging it, you might be used to big divots and some right elbow pain. But if you get the swing working more on plane and in sequence, you don't have this huge giant divot. All right, I guess I'm hitting this ball because I got a ball down there. All right, it was like a super solid five yard block, 163. So I'm watching the replay there, the first one with the noodle in the way. And you can see the swing direction as I'm watching this replay is going a lot more this way, which is exactly what I want. So I'm gonna get, I'm gonna do a lot of these swings not hitting a ball. Now one you, you could do, you could do, be very extreme, and let's do that. So let's say you're in an extreme case where you, you go here and then you really come over this way a lot. So if you're in an extreme case this way, then you have to bend it back the other way with exaggeration. So Tony and Mike both, both talk about, think of a, a piece of steel. If, you, if it's bent like this, right, to get it straight up and down, if you keep bending it straight, it's gonna still be that way. To get it this straight up and down, you got to go that way, and then when you get off of it, it's straight. It's the same way with exaggeration drills. So this is going to be a very big exaggeration drill. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this just like one ball inside the, the target line here. So there's my, my T right there, and go down the target line, and I'm going to go one ball inside, and I'm going to put this thing straight up too. This is 
hard ground. This is a really extreme drill. But if you're doing it right, you should be able to hit the ball this way. I'm not even gonna try to hit a ball this way because this is very difficult. So what I'm gonna do is hit this T, make a backswing, and if I hit this T and even have a normal amount of rotation, I'm gonna hit this noodle. So, and you gotta put it in a spot where you would hit it. So what I'm gonna do instead is I have to get my arms moving fast and swing it to the right. So I can hit the T doing that. See, that's the noodle. It's really tough, really, really tough. I have this noodle, one ball inside the target line, the cone in the normal position. And with the cone, the, the more you want to exaggerate it, the more you bring the cone towards you. So here. So we're going to try that. So we're going to tee up a ball and a little baby tee. So we got this here, a tee there, remember? This here. And this is not easy at all. You've got to really get your arms working in order to hit this ball and not hit that noodle there. That was great. So hopefully, see, because I have so much stuff in the way, swing profile didn't catch that one. Let's see if we can get one where swing profile catches that. In the replay of that, if I feel like editing this video, we'll be able to see something really interesting there. As far as most people are here and they rotate th like this first, and then they're gonna take this out, might take that out, they'll definitely take this out. This is for like when you're really trying to fix out of sequence. I don't even call it over the top. It's out of sequence because you're here and the torso and hips are turning and the arms are staying up. We want the arms to be swinging and then the hips to be finishing it. Basically, once the hands are get back to this level, that's when the hips finish it. With this drill, it's really just an arm swing. It's very tough to do. Let's see if I can do it. Square up. And I'll tell you what, that is flying the same distance as my regular shot. Let's see if I can get my swing caddy. So even though I'm, I'm I basically, in, in order to avoid having to hit this, like almost like a trouble shot, I'm having to use really no body rotation. Okay. That was definitely faster hands. And you can see it in the ball flight, and that's ultimately what you want is better ball flight, right? Because when I first came out here, I was hitting them solid with big divots that were going straight or pulled five yards. They, that'd be normal, like good shots on the golf course. But now I'm hitting them solid. There's almost no curve on it, and they're like two, yard, two yards to the right, but real solid. I don't think the cone and all this stuff that I have going on is letting my uh, swing caddy to catch it. That's okay, this is very extreme here. That's okay. Just like I was in, had a trouble shot and there was a stump there and a tree there. And I wanted to hit a draw back to the green. There we go. Oh, so good. Like I said, nobody's gonna get any better at golf looking cool. You look cool, you're gonna stay the same. All right, so now we're gonna get this off of that kind of extreme setting and onto more of a normal setting, which is see how the club plane is here, the club plane is there. Let's go just a little inside of it, just a little, and push this in. There we go. So now that would be about, this is the same as like using a plane board. I could put one there too and, and get rid of the cone, but I like the cone. Now I'm gonna to switch to driver after I hit one more shot without such an extreme setup. I'm gonna to switch to driver because there's something I've been working on with that. So same feeling though. 
See, as soon as I took that noodle away, I started rotating too early, and I hit a, just a dead solid pull. That's not what I want. All right, let's try that again. I gotta keep the idea that there's a noodle here straight up, like I really have to be extreme. Really has to feel exaggerated to get me to do it. There we go. Really nice. All right, let's get the driver out. That was seven iron. Hope you're enjoying this, guys. It's been running now for, it doesn't say how many minutes. Quite a few minutes. So there, there we go. So the main thing when you're doing stuff like that, and, and Swing Profile caught that, so we could, we could do a replay and see kind of what the difference was. Oh, still in replay mode. Now one of the reasons that I like the Swing Caddy is for some reason, I get a lot of, I get a lot of people who send me things with like apps and phones and, and things to do on your phone. But the thing that I don't know if companies realize is my phone is occupied. My phone is taken up already. So like if, if it's a swing tracker app or a, a uh, sorry, a, like a, statist a statistics tracking app for the, on the course, like my phone's already being used as a camera. And here on the range, my phone's being used with swing profile. So the thing I like about the swing caddy is it, this is its own device. You don't, it doesn't take up your phone, unless you have an old phone, which I have a lot of old phones, which I use. Like right now I'm using an old phone to do my audio recording. But uh, I would rather have a device that actually does the whole thing. Like for example, the FlightScope Mevo is better than the Swing Caddy, I believe, but I need, I, I need to be looking at the data on my phone. I don't wanna have to do that. I can look down and see it right here. Now it would be cool to be able to see that and then go into an app if I wanted to and be able to, be able to see the ball flight, but I can see the ball flight. This is the thing about getting better at golf is that Tony uh, Lutzak taught me from Mississippi. Is he's always asking, when I hit a really good shot, like that last one was really good, it was dead straight, kind of mid-height and uh, very long carry you got to ask yourself, like, okay, well, what was that? You know, what did that feel like to you? So that you can kind of repeat that. Now, feels don't work, so the first thing is too much. So the first thing is, okay, I got that with this station. So, and then to be able to translate that on the course, you got to say, okay, well, to me, that really felt like I was wide here, 
and I really let it out there and I was really concentrating on putting it on the button, which is super critical and crucial. So I'm gonna to try to do that again. So we're talking about putting it on the button. And since we're doing, I mean, this is a very intense practice session. So since we're talking about putting it on the bu button, this was from the dollar store. Those noodles are both from the dollar store. The shafts that are holding the noodles up are from um, the golf store, which they gave them to me for free because they're just, you know, throwaway shafts. They were going to throw them out anyway. And uh, the bendable noodles from Toys R Us. This foot spray is from the dollar store, and this is an awesome training aid because hitting it in the center is really, really, is going to make a huge difference between ball speed. The other thing is, too, is that I noticed on that really fast one compared to the other ones, it was teed up a little higher. So let's see if I can do that again. So I'm going to go here, here. Okay, we're forward in my stance. It's going to be really tough here. Oh, let's see if I, swing caddy just died. Uh, it says low battery. It's not going to let me. Okay, I should have brought more batteries. But it was saying, and this, that's a negative, it was saying full battery, even though I've been using this thing for a while, until it said no battery. It went from full to zero, just like that. Okay, so this is tough because I mean, now I'm going to try to put it a little more forward in my stance, and that is really extreme, having, it, having the cone that close. But I can do it. If I can do it with the tee, I can do it with the ball. Ooh, that's tough, having that thing that close. Ooh. All right, I can do it. It's not going to be easy, though. Oh, it's not going to be easy. This thing is really close to me. That's OK. Just a drill. <sighs> Dead straight, but I lift it up because of this thing. And So let's see. I don't see where that hit on the face. Oh, there it is. That hit on the face, low heel, right there. For me, I really have to feel let it out if you keep hearing me say that because if I try to go like backswing and then arms first, it doesn't work because that's kind of fast. It has to feel the backs to the target and the arms are being let out. And then about here, the, the speed really kicks in. Here, let it out, hit it in the center of the face. There we go. So that one, you can see, hit dead center of the face, a little high. So that's perfect. It was a draw. So this is going to require another noodle, which is crazy. But we're getting crazy today. We're, you know, we want to be better. We really want to be better at golf. And we do not care what it takes, right? Within reason. And some people are not even within reason. All right, this is gonna be interesting. I like having this there, but I'm gonna use it. Take this stick and put it inside this shaft here. This is another drill from, uh, we'll put this inside there all the way down. Now I got this, and this is gonna, it's gonna be kinda tough to set up, but doable. Basically, I want it behind my right ear so that I can't overfold. And the cool thing about this bendable, if I put it in a regular noodle here, it's just straight up and you kind of have to live with where it is. This bendable one, I can put it into where I want it. I just want that awareness that that thing's there so I don't collapse. So we got one, two, three things plus the foot spray. I mean, this is intense. You don't want to try to fix everything all at once, but the more you get into golf and trying to make people better, the more you see that um, problems that people have and that I have are all connected. As far as the overswing is connected to the over, out of sequence over the top move. And the out of sequence over the top move is connected to this. So it's a really a good swing because of the club, the way the club is designed. Everybody says there's a million different ways to swing, but really the club wants to be swung a certain way. Maybe not a certain motor control way, but there's a certain plane that it should be on. Okay, I didn't mind that. 
Those are the kind of swings I need to take, those slow ones. I'm gonna make this just a little less extreme here. So more extreme in the cone is closer to you, less extreme is a little further away. When that thing's there, I used to have this thing I still do sometimes, it's called a wobble. Where it's at the top, it's good, and then it kind of wobbles off, and then it has to dip back. I want to be, I look at Justin Thomas's swing where he goes real solid. Okay, straight, but mmm. I was out of sequence. Definitely hump the goat there. So let's try that again. And here. Because when you get a shorter swing, you're gonna feel like you're not in a powerful position, even though you are. So you're gonna do crazy things to try to feel like you're getting your power back that you're losing by taking a shorter swing. For example, this will feel powerful. So if you take that shorter swing, you might go even more over the top, like that first one I hit. That's why it's good to do it with this and that combined. Also, when you take a shorter swing, and you're feeling like you just don't have enough ump, this is gonna feel like you can get from the inside the ball more and it's gonna feel powerful, it's not. So you gotta be here and... So I can do it without the ball. Let's see if I can do it with the ball. That's exactly what I need to be doing. A little slow motion, punch shot. And on swing profile, you'll see that's the one before I turn my hat backwards. And with swing profile, if I hit a really good shot, the next shot, I turn my hat backwards so that in review later on, I can, I can look at that and know where that good one was. Because you'll be surprised. You'll, the good ones and the bad ones in the replay, they'll all look the same for the most part. It was really hard to tell which one was the good one and which one was the bad one. All right, I was able to have some more speed there. Didn't quite get in the center of the face, which is gonna be tough. Turn my head back regular. All right, so one of the main things you guys always hear me on the channel is talk about, but since I've been talking about it, I haven't been doing it, which I'm gonna get into now is two things, is flip-flopping. So get on, the, on all the training aids and all the stuff, but then walk away from it, like I'm doing here, and just try to hit a golf course shot. A good shot, slight pull, and then you'll start to notice that like I know that shot, and I know that if I was in my noodle station and everything, I would have been hitting that cone a little bit, or swinging a little bit above that cone. And that's my transition. So that's the thing that these stations get you to learn. There we go. I went dead straight, good impact spot, the foot spray showing me, that was good. The other kind of flip-flopping that's super crucial and important is club flip-flopping and stochastic practice more random practice. So just like you would do on the, on the course, I mean, there's a million tips and videos about this. Nobody does it in real life. Like this is maybe the most prescribed thing talked about as far as range practice, but nobody does it. But it bears repeating that it's good to go driver, eight iron, wedge, driver, hybrid, you know, just be kind of random about it. Just like that getting it feeling like, wow, is that even possible for me to, to swing this without hitting that cone? Oh, so good. That's what you gotta feel. You gotta get to the extremes, the absolute opposites of, I mean, Monty used to say to me all the time that golf instruction is all screwed up because they're teaching the opposite of bad. Instead of teaching the good thing, they're teaching the opposite of bad. So like. If somebody is humping the goat, somebody might teach, 
like to like really sit this way or something. And I, I totally understand what he's saying. But as long as the opposite of what you're doing is a better direction than what you're doing. For example, let's say you're doing this. The total opposite of that would be this, right? Well, this, even if they're both bad, going too far from outside in or too far from inside out, you'd rather be too far from inside out than too far from outside in because we stand on this side of the ball. You guys will have to decide that for yourself. What works for you, what doesn't. Okay. It's going to be a punch shot this time. Well, it didn't go as low as I wanted, but it went that straight, so it's okay. So I want to feel something pretty extreme with the cone here. I want to feel like, ooh, that feels wild. So good. Oh, swing profile caught that one, good. So I'll be able to see that one was awesome. We want to keep flip-flopping, so I want to hit a driver now. Driver practice, I love having the swing cap. I'm, I'm disappointed that the, the battery died because I love challenging myself to, to break new records. And today, that was a new record for me. 281 carry is the best carry I've had on that thing with a range ball. With a real ball I've had in the high 280s, but not with a range ball. So this one, I kind of want to... This one, I'm going to be thinking about nothing. You've got to get your, your, your focus external. What I mean is, don't be thinking about what your body's doing. All I'm going to be thinking about is trying to avoid these obstacles on either side of me here. Back there, too. Even though this one keeps swinging, that's the idea is there, there. Really let the club, the club gets let out with your back to the target. Like... That's so good. Oh, that was so good. Now the ball might not have gone crazy far, but I could feel my back was to the target quite a long time there. Swing profile caught that one. That was my first driver after my iron shots. I'm gonna tag that one too. So what I mean is here and not torso first, not hips spinning first, it's more here and letting it out. Now, there was a big debate between Tony and I when we went to Las Vegas in December of 2017, last year. And the debate, or the, the question I asked was, hey, in building your reactionary golf swing, you talk about getting to the top of the swing and doing what I just did. Getting to the top of the swing and feeling arms first and then the body, and then the club. So his sequence he always talks about is arms, arms, body, club on the downswing. Arms, body, club, right? And my question to Tony that we were having a debate about was, does it need to be at the backswing step or like pressure, then arms, body, club? Or should it be kind of, when the arms go down, should there be pressure? And the answer was, it depends. But it's for, such a, it's for such a small population of golfers that you wouldn't want to make it the overarching philosophy. So, right, because basically the, the, the problem with that is that when you tell people to step or go left, they're going to twist and go left almost all the time. So if they can kind of sit that way, that's okay. But really, when you go arms first, you should get the feeling that this is naturally happening into your left side. So for me, what was working really well was at the top, I was feeling that my legs were a stake, and I was putting that stake into the ground before. Now, not spinning. So like this, watch. Hmm. Hmm. Stenson does a, an awesome job of that. Here. Here. So we're going to put that stake in the ground a little bit. And really, before you go, you got to get your swing thoughts external, outside your body. So that's an external thought, putting that stake into the ground. So I just get that feeling a couple times, then I get in my station, and I'm just trying to avoid these obstacles. Mm. 
<clears throat> that was good. Back swing. Just miss the obstacles. Once you start getting too complicated in your brain, like, what do I want to do? Just miss the obstacles. Here, here, let it out. See, and now, there we go, nice fade. Now I'm able to, see before, in order to miss the obstacles, I had to be um, only hitting a T, or I had to be swinging real slow, it just felt like a little punch. Now I'm actually able to miss the obstacles and have some speed into it. Eventually, when you, because swing thoughts slow you down. So that's why the last thing you should be thinking is, is it's got to be external, something outside your body. The ultimate external is ball flight. Like if I get here and I'm just like push draw. That was a good one, dead straight. That's the ultimate external. I'm just thinking push draw. And if you think of the top guys, Jordan Spieth and some of the top pros, they're standing over the ball, like almost like miming what they're going to be doing. You see their arms working and stuff. They're really thinking about the trajectory and the shape. That's like next level stuff to be able to do that. Now, a little, now that's the best. Something that's, so the worst is thinking body thoughts. Okay, let me twist and fire or let me go arm, you know, like all those, that's like for on the range stuff, which even on the range won't work too much. The next best is swinging around. It, the next best is uh, more external than that, more external than your body is external of the club face awareness and really getting your mind thinking about, okay, let me hit this in the center of the club face. So if like, your mind can only really think about so much at once, right? So you gotta decide like, what am I gonna be thinking about when I hit this ball? So you could be thinking about body stuff, you could be thinking about hitting the golf ball in the center of the face, or you can just be thinking about even more external than, than the center of the golf ball is now this stuff. So I'm just thinking about avoiding this stuff. <clears throat> Straight shot. Got it a little, yep, yeah, just a little on the toe, quarter inch on the toe, but it went straight. So internal is something in your body. Internal but a little less is something in your arms. External but not very is the club face, which is a good thing to think about. More external is avoiding obstacles, and the most external and the best is thinking about uh, swing shape. So that's where we want to get to. And if you guys have ever been in the zone where you just feel like you're stringing pars together and you're making birdies and you just feel like you can't miss. It's a fleeting feeling, but it happens sometimes. What are you thinking about during those times? There might be a little, like, a little feel, but for the most part, that's when you're actually playing golf. Like, I've, I've, I've said before, like, I only feel like I've ever actually played golf maybe, like, five times where I was so on that I wasn't thinking about this area and this, all this stuff. I was out there playing golf. I was hitting shots and creating shots. And then that's when golf gets like, as fun as golf is, that's when golf gets like ridiculously fun because you're able to actually put the ball where you want it to go. And that's when course strategy starts getting unlocked. So I'm just thinking about shot shape here. Thin but straight. That's the thing that you'll, you'll notice too when you keep working on these stations is your missiles will start, start going straight. They won't be like dead left in the woods and all that stuff. Okay, I'm gonna hit this one solid. Nice push draw. I like that one. Okay, well, that's it guys, I'm gonna sign off. I'm gonna actually keep on practicing, but I think over an hour is, is good. Hopefully you understand. Um, it, looks, it looks, I know it looks bad to have all these noodles and stuff. Almost every person who's come out to the range today, which is a slow day, but has made some kind of comment uh, from before I saw your filming and stuff. 
Who cares? You really got, this is the stuff you got, you got to get out of your comfort zone to get better. To know what, like, because there's a lot of different drills to do. The, the main thing to remember is don't get locked into that thought that a lot of people say that says, oh, hey, everybody swings different. You know, just swing your swing. Everybody swings so different. But the golf clubs are the same for everybody. They're basically set up the same for everybody, where it's a shaft, it's something coming off the shaft. There's certain things that the club has to do to hit good shots. Now, your body positions and stuff, that can, that can be totally different. But that's why doing these obstacle drills are, is really important in your development to be better. Now, I wanted to talk more about that reactionary golf masterclass stuff to really get that extra little bit of power with the body, shot putting and pushing that car battery down the sled there. If, if my machine had kept on working, I would have done that to, to see if I could have, if uh, I could have gotten, instead of 281 carry, maybe like 290 carry by adding in a little bit more of this. But you gotta develop that arm swing first. Thanks for watching, everybody.